Hi everyone, it is Thursday, June 7th. It's my third day on a liquid diet. Um, I'm doing okay besides having um, a lot of um, low blood sugars. Um, excuse the noise, I'm over at um, the home that I grew up in, um, my parents' home. For those who don't know, my mom passed away over a year ago and my dad passed away um, uh, five years ago. Um, and they left me in this home, so um, besides the home that we live in, um, we had to come over and take care of this home as well. So that's where we're at now. We're, my husband and my sons are outside cutting the grass. So I want to come in. I'm in the house. Um, when we come over here to um, cut the grass and, you know, shovel the snow and stuff, you know, I come inside. And like I said, this is where I grew up at, guys. Um, I come inside and um, I walk around, you know, and think about my parents, you know, um, think of the memories I had growing up with them there, here, and everything, um, my mother and my, bo my father, I believe, both passed in this home, because my father, um, when, um, he passed, I got the call on, it was a Sunday, I got the call, and I rushed over here, and my mom was in hysterical, and I walked in to find Somebody that I consider Peter Pan because my father, he was from the South and he just just had this discipline about himself, you know what I mean? Um, he was just just that type of um, man, you know, he, um, oh, it's hard to describe my dad, you know what I mean? I know he loved me and everything, but he was just, you know, he was a man, man, put like that, you know, so um, when I walked in, you know, to see him on this floor in the um in the um dining room behind me, and about four or five you know paramedics around him. You know, they shook me. You know, because I've always have known my father to be this strong man. You know, no matter what was going on with him and everything. You know, he always carried this you know um personality that you know that nothing bothered him. You know, so it was like kind of like. You know, strange to me to walk in and see my um, father laying on the ground and all these people around him and his body lifeless. They try to tell me and everything that he had a, um, a slight heartbeat when um, I got here. But um, they had, from my mom tell me, they had tried you know, to, to resuscitate him like about four or five times. And they had put, I forgot the name of the machine, on his chest to try to jumpstart his heart. They had even gave him a shot they uh, minister to you in your leg, in your veins, to uh, jumpstart your heart, and none of it was working, you know. Um, from what I was looking at my father, you know, uh, I know paramedics are not supposed to tell you, you know, um, directly that, you know, your loved one has passed away, but I always knew that he died right in front of me. And um, I asked my mom, um, my mom, um, I got a call, again, I was out, I got a call from my uh, family member saying that um, I need to get over to the house, and something was wrong with my mom, my aunt called me and told me she had been talking to my mom, and then she made this weird sign, the phone dropped, and she tried to call back, and, you know, she couldn't get her back on the phone, so, um, there's only two people who had a key to the house, it was me and my sister, and they couldn't get a hold of my sister, so, um, I rushed over here, me and my family rushed over here. And, um, the house was dark, guys, you know what I mean? Um, my mom, she used to keep the lights on, you know, in the house and everything, because she lived by herself. And to keep the lights on, it was extremely, like, hot in here. My mama didn't like the, um, the, uh, the, the, the heat to be that hot in the house. So, when I walked in, after I got over here with my family, and, you know, my uncle and them, they called the paramedics automatically, because we knew something was wrong. Um, I opened the door, and I'm calling my mom's name, and she didn't answer and everything. It was extremely hot in this house, and it was dark. So all those signs right there let me know something wasn't right. So um, we finally found that my uncle turned on the light with the help of my um, cell phone, and I spot her feet before anything else, and we turned the light on, and God, she was having a seizure. She was having a seizure, and mine didn't have a history of seizures at all um she was having a seizure and by the time um before i had got over here my family had called an ambulance already so they came in a little bit after i opened the door and um they were asking me did she have um 
that she has a uh, history of seizures, and I said no. So uh, we rushed her to the hospital and everything, you know, and my mom had me down as her, um, what is your name? Someone who made, I can't think of it right now, guys. Um, the name or somebody, and when you, uh, when you cannot talk and they make a decision for you, she had me down as the one who made decisions for her, and medical-wise and anything concerning her. So, when we get to the hospital and everything, you know, they rush her in the back. I'm in the ambulance with my mom. They rush her in the back. Excuse me, guys. I hope you guys can hear me because my husband right in front of me with a lawnmower. But I'm trying to talk up louder. As I get to the hospital, I ride in the um, ambulance with my mom. They rush her in the back, and I'm, I'm going in the back with her, and they stop me and everything. They rush her in the back, and then they come out, and they asking me, you know, what is your mom, what type, what type of uh, medicine is your mom on, you know? Uh, what kind of help that she had? And I, you know, my mama, I knew some of the things she tried to keep a lot of things from the family, but I knew some things that she has. So I was, and I also knew what you know, um, pharmacy she used. So I was able to tell them, you know, some of the things that I did know, some of the things she didn't keep from me. Like, you know, I used to come over and see her, I used to pick up her pills and look at it and ask, Mama, what's this for? You know, oh, it's for nothing. I, and I used to Google it, you know, because she wouldn't tell me the truth. And so when um, I get to the hospital, you know, and they come running out, ask me about my mom's condition and what medicine she take and all this. I remember she used a Walmart and all her prescriptions went there. Thank God that I did. Every time I try to record, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Every time I try to record, my phone always make somebody send me a text or email. But um, anyway, um. I was able to tell the doctors that my used um, Walmart, and so they called Walmart and was able to get all the medicine she, you know, was on and all that. And so then, like five, ten minutes later, now I'm by myself. The rest of my family are at the hospital with me, but because I'm her daughter and everything, and I make all decisions for my mom, um, I was with my mom, and so you know, I was away from my husband, the rest of my family, and everything. You know, I was by, basically by myself. So the doctors come out and tell me that my mom, the like she had a massive uh, stroke. And that um a bad one that they need for me to make a decision to um um see they want to remove the blood clots in her brain and everything but they needed permission for me to because if not she was gonna die then and um I had to make a decision they need a decision right then that if I wanted you know them to uh, perform surgery or not so I told them you know you do anything you can to save my mama so they did a um, surgery. And, um, they were, she had three, um, blood clots in the brain. They was able to get two, but the third one was behind her ear, and they couldn't, they kept trying, they kept telling us, they kept trying to get it, but, you know, um, they couldn't get it, and they want to keep hurting her, so they stopped and everything, and so, um, after that, you know, um, she um, went up to ICU and went up there. She kept having seizures and everything, so they put her, you know what I mean, on a breathing, you know, uh, on a breathing tube, you know, um, so she wouldn't keep having her seizures. So, um, you know, I, I prayed, hopefully I prayed, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed that, you know, that she was going to make a, a miraculous, you know, a recovery. But um, they did another MRI and they said that, you know, that, they didn't foresee her recovering, you know, um, her whole, um, her whole, um, right side, you know, um, which is the side they say it was where you communicate, where they say that even if she did survive, she wouldn't be able to be herself. She wouldn't be able to, you know, communicate with me or her grandchildren. She wouldn't understand me. She wouldn't be able to use that, you know, that side of her uh, body at all. And, um, I used to talk to my mama all the time. Me and my mama were close. And she always would tell me, Sean, if anything ever happened to me and I can't be in a capacity, you know, like I was to talk to you, to, you know, to be able to talk to my grandkids, and, you know, that's not no life I want to live, you know what I mean? Let me go. So um, I had to make the decision, you know, um, in February um, to um, take off the ventilator. And um, February 10th, uh, 2017, my mom passed away um, at um, 2.35 p.m. And I was standing around her but I think that always, you know, you know, I, the whole time that she was in the hospital, I would ask her, you know, when, you know, she had a breathing tube, I would ask her, you know what I mean? I had, um, I have a picture of her in a hospital and my dedication for Mother's Day. I'm 
so you guys might want to take a look at that. But um, I um used to ask her the whole time when she was um in the hospital. Ma, if you just open up one eye, let me know that you hear me. Like she would move her hand or something like that, and doctors would tell me that they they didn't think she could hear me. But you know, I. I used to say things to her, and she used to do them or make me believe that she did hear me. So, they're not God. You know what I mean? I know, you know, God used their hands, but they're not God. And so, in my belief, I believe that she, you know, could hear me. And, um, lo and behold, the day that, um, she, um, left this earth, February 10th, 2017, when we were all around her in the hospital room. And I asked her the whole time she was in the hospital, please open one eye, let me know that you heard me. And do you know that she opened up her eye and I was standing on the left side of her, turned her head and looked at me with that one eye and it closed it back and it passed away. Yeah, she did. So I think about that all the time that I believe that all the things that I was saying to her while um, she was in the hospital, I believe, I really believe she heard me. Because, you know, if um, she hadn't heard me, she wouldn't be able to, right before she um, took her last breath, she turned her head. And we had a whole lot of family members in there. She turned her head and um, and looked at me. And then turned her back and then she and she passed away. So, I always had that memory, you know, of um, that. So, when I come over here to this house, I walk around. And I think about my mom, I think about my dad and everything. And um, I cry, like, so I, like, I cry now. You know, um, and um, I just think about think about the memories I had with my parents and and on um, how I miss them and um you know it's just I just think about you know those memories you know what my parents here so that's what I do when um um my husband and my son's outside cutting grass I um come in the house walk around sometimes I, you know I um act like they're here and I talk like you know because I believe that they spirit is so deeply in this house this is where I was raised that I can um feel they spirit so I walk around and I talk I sit in the chair that my dad used to sit in I sit in the room that my mom was in before she, um so she, you know the um, ambulance came and got her I sit around I just sometimes don't do nothing I just sit and be quiet so that's what I'm doing today guys um Sorry, guys, but I'm a human, you know, and um, I miss my parents a lot. So, like I said, that's what I'm doing today. Um, over here, um, maintaining the household that uh, my parents lived in and I lived in and that they lived to me. So, um, we'll go out here and see what the um, boys are doing out here in the yard. And uh, I'll be seeing you guys on another vlog. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.